Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Here to describe for you and show you pictorially the meaning of the term beam width when it comes to unidirectional antennas such as the Yagi or Quad in the high frequency range and to some extent at very high frequencies and also for other types of antennas less commonly known such as the helical or dish antenna that you will find at VHF and ultra high frequencies and sometimes even at microwave frequencies. The beam width is the angle between the half power points of the main lobe in the antenna the, that, and the main lobe is the, uh, uh, the geometric picture of what the strongest signal zone looks like from such an antenna. The favored direction in this case is north. The antenna is pointed north and the half power points with each circle in this graph representing three decibels down. That's half the power of the circle outside it. The half power points are right here. And it looks like maybe this angle is something on the order of 50 degrees or something, maybe around that range. 25 degrees here, 25 degrees here. The beam width of a unidirectional antenna. That gives you an idea of how sharp the major lobe in the antenna actually is, how, how sharply directive the antenna is. The narrower the beam width, the more precise you have to uh, use for aiming and getting the signal that comes in. You have to be more, more careful when you point it in order to get the maximum signal out in the direction you want and the maximum signal in. The beam width may not necessarily be the same in the horizontal plane as it is in the vertical plane. It may be 60 degrees in the vertical plane and only 40 degrees in the horizontal plane. So it's not a perfect cone, the um, unidirectional pattern where it plotted in three dimensions. The major lobe would not necessarily take the form of a cone if you outlined the half power zone. It might be an elongated cone, either stretched vertically or stretched horizontally. Uh, but usually the half power points refer to the horizontal plane. That's why we have north, east, south, and west here. We are looking at this situation, the antenna being at the center of this diagram, from straight overhead. We're looking straight down on the antenna, so it's a Yagi. And the major lobe looks like this because the Yagi is pointed north. The half power points or the points at which the signal is three decibels down with respect to the maximum signal. The half power points are these two points right here. Uh, as I said earlier, it looks like maybe about 50 degrees. This might be characteristic of a three or four element Yagi. In general, the more elements you add to a Yagi or quad, the, usually in the form of directors in front of the main element, the sharper the directional pattern will be and the narrower the beam width will get. With helical and dish antennas, uh, the variables are a little different. The larger the dish with respect to the wavelength, the smaller the beam width in general. And with a helical antenna, the longer the helix, generally the narrower the beam width is. But that's what, uh, when you see an antenna directional pattern, and it, it looks something like this perhaps, these minor lobes here almost always exist with any type of antenna. Sometimes they're more significant than I show them here, sometimes less. Um, with a dish antenna, of course, you're not going to get a minor lobe in the rear, but 
but this is the situation uh, which gives rise to the term beam width. So that is today's little antenna tutorial, courtesy of W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations, saying 73 and so long, which, in my native fist, regardless of the beam width, regardless of the antenna type, invariably translates to da-da-da-da-da-da. -da 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 -da.